Welcome back, class. Ternary compounds. It's it's a name that you will usually only well, it's a compound, so you're gonna hear it in chemistry class. But ternary, it it, it is something that you typically hear uh, most often, just like in science. So ternary refers to three. So we have a special class of compounds that we call ternary compounds. And sometimes you might in uh, textbooks or in other reference sources from a teacher or professor may just hear the term like uh, complex ionic compounds because we are working with ions. Uh, uh, but this is a term that is, that is also um, a way of, def of talking about this particular class of compounds. So let's just jump in with some examples. So uh, a very simple classic example that you'll hear about is uh, one that is called uh, sodium hydroxide. All right. So the, the thing about these compounds is it is different than type 1 and type 2. The, the naming them is actually easier because the, the anion already is named in the way that it needs to be named. So let me show you what I mean. We know what sodium is. We know sodium is Na. And then hydroxide, if we go to the periodic table, we'll notice that no matter where we are on the periodic table, that there is not something called hydroxide. So what we have to do is go to our, a chemical reference sheet, our, our chem equation sheet, reference sheet, and that I provided for you. And if you're not in my class, you can find this information anywhere online. But this is just one that we use here in my chemistry class. Let me go ahead and zoom in right here, and you'll notice that there's a section of this called polyatomic ions. And these are just the common ones. There are more than just these, but these are the most common ones. And so these are the ones that I typically kind of focus on in class. Um, and that, and again, you won't have to memorize these. Now, if you were in uh, an AP level chemistry course, typically um, you're, you're made to memorize these things. But once, but like with anything, if you write it often enough, you're going to remember it. So we're going we're gonna to use this as often as we need to, and it's just going to stick with us. And so we had sodium hydroxide. And so if we, if we look carefully, we can see that right there, there's our, there's our hydroxide polyatomic ion. And we can see it's OH negative. So I'm going to go back here. I know that I need OH negative. And we, we remember that sodium is a positive one charge because it is, because it is in group one. So I'm going to draw my yield sign, and what we're doing is still just writing a balanced ionic equation for what is occurring. We see here that the sum of these charges is still going to be zero. One plus a negative one is zero. So we do whatever we did with type one compounds as well, and we simply bring our cation and our anion close together, and we are done. This is done. This is the balanced ionic equation. And we would call this compound right here sodium hydroxide. Let's, let's go with, how about we're going to go with, instead of sodium, let's go ahead and replace that with strontium. Okay, So strontium we know is SR2 plus. Hydroxide, we've just learned, is OH negative. And that's how you say it, OH negative. And we can see here that the sum of the oxidation charges is not zero. And so we're going to need this to equal zero. So, we're, so what's common, we can see that there's a, a coefficient of one here and a coefficient of one here. We don't write ones, they're understood. But we realize that we're going to need to have our oxidation charges equal to one of them being positive, the other being negative. And so we realize that we're going to need two hydroxide ions for this to balance out because one times two here is positive two, check. And then two times the negative one charge here is negative two, that checks out. 
So we realize that we need one strontium and we need two hydroxides. So here is one hydroxide, there is two. So now you'll notice that we had to use, we had to put parentheses around the polyatomic ion. In this example up here, we did not need parentheses because there was only, there was only one of the polyatomic ions. But when we have multiple, well, I didn't write, I did not write the word multiple correctly, did I? When we have multiple polyatomic ions, then we must put them in parentheses. And here's why. If I were to have just written S-R-O-H and then a 2, then you can clearly see that there would only be one strontium, one oxygen, and two, hy two hydrogens. But we need two hydroxides, and hydroxide is OH. So the only way to get that would be to surround the entire polyatomic ion with parentheses. And now it's, it's, like, it's like the concept of math. It's like distributed. There's two of everything that is inside of that parentheses. All right. Let's, let's come up with a, let's do, let's do a couple of, let's do two more. So let's take calcium sulfate, okay? So calcium from the periodic table we know is Ca, and then we're going to add it to sulfate, so we need to go back to our chemical equation sheet, and we scroll down and we see right here, we find sulfate. We see that that's SO4, 2 minus. So we are going to head back to our work, SO4, 2 minus. And calcium, we know, is in the second group. So it's going to have a positive 2 oxidation charge. So positive 2. We can see that the sum of the charges equals zero. So CaSO4. And I'm going to back this up for a second because for those of you who are watching this, I want, I want you to not think that you have to always circle those numbers. I just circled the numbers to draw your attention to it, but since the sum of the oxidation numbers is already zero, we just simply bring all this together, calcium sulfate. And let's go with another one. Let's go with beryllium. And we'll go with phosphate. Okay, so we go to our periodic table, find beryllium, and we see beryllium has a positive two charge. It's in group two. So we write a BE, Two plus, and then phosphate. We go back to our reference sheet, and we want to find our phosphate. And we scroll up and down here, dun, dun, dun. and there it is at the bottom. Here we are, right there. There's our phosphate. Okay. Back this up. So now let's go back to our our page we're working. We got P. O, four, three, minus. We look at this and we realize that what is common between three and two is six. That lets us know that we're going to need three beryllium's because three times two is six. And then we're going to need two phosphates because two times three is also six. That one's negative. Six plus a negative six, right? So three times two would be six plus. Two times three would be six minus. If I add those together, we get zero. Okay, that's just scratch work. You don't need to put this down for anything like an assessment or whatever. That's just scratch work that you would be doing off to the side if you cannot visually see that in your mind's eye. Okay. So let me back this up so that when we're done, we will have the final answer nice and clean. All right. So we need, according to this, with our coefficient of three on beryllium, we need three beryllium's, and we're going to need two phosphates. 
here is one phosphate. We remember that if we need more than one polyatomic ion, you put it in parentheses, and we need two of them. So now we are done. That is the compound formula for beryllium phosphate and the compound formula for calcium sulfate. And we also looked at two different hydroxide compounds as well. There you go. Always good to uh, learn with you. Stay curious. I'll see you really soon. Look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Bye.